I'm gonna look at one more loading. Okay, I'm gonna have the length as L. And I'm gonna take the intensity at this end as Q1. And we're going to take the intensity at this point as Q2. Okay, so <coughs> this thing is different than a uh, triangle or rectangle, but <coughs> you can use both of those methods. I mean, I could take this loading and let's make this two triangles out of it. Take one triangle at the bottom and you take the second triangle at the top. So you divide the trapezoidal load into two separate triangles. Then <coughs> this here, the bottom triangle is uh, changed and it becomes F R1 at X1 bar. I mean, I could take this triangle and then reduce that to a resultant force FR1 with the location at X1 bar. <coughs> then we take this triangle and I do exact <laughs> same thing. You take this, change that to a resultant force FR2 and its location is going to be X2 bar. So <coughs> Since you have the trapezoid and it's changed to two triangles, so you reduce that to two constant air forces at two distinct locations. And once you have that, you go one more step and you reduce that to a single reserve force and there's going to be just one X bar with find its location. So the whole thing is really two step. The first step you go from axial load to two of those forces and then from those two forces you reduce the whole thing to one single force. Number one. Now it's triangle one and the intensity is Q1, it's acting on length L, so it's going to be Q1 L over two. Then the location for that is x1 bar and it has to be a third from the base. So <coughs> that's your base for this. You're looking at third of the base. So <coughs> that's L over 3. Then for the second one, you need F R2. Here's the base, which is Q2. The height is L. So the area is going to be Q2 L over 2. Then <coughs> your force here should act third from here. So when I say third from here, you're looking at a length of L over 3. So from the origin of point O, your X2 bar is going to be 2L over 3. I mean, it's, it's third from the point on the extreme right, so it's going to be 2L two, two over 3 from the point on extreme left. So this is what you get for this diagram. I mean, this one is right here, and this one is right here. Now, if you want to go from here to here, your FR is going to be F R1 plus F R2. So we get Q1 L over 2, Q2 L over 2. And the whole thing simply becomes L over 2, Q1 plus Q2. So that's what we have as the resultant force. And <coughs> again, you will see as that this here is really this whole area. I mean, if you had a trapezoid, 
with two heights as q1 q2 separated by a length l and if you want to find the area the area would be the average which is this average height multiplied by the length so that's exactly the area for a <coughs> trapezoid the next thing you need is x bar so you have x bar fr that's the moment about point O and that's going to be x1 bar f1 plus x2 bar f2 <coughs> the, the, these two are equivalent the moment about this point for this system as well as this system should be same which means L third Q1 L over 2 plus 2 L third Q2 L over 2 okay so <coughs> on the equation on the right let's say if I take uh, L over 6 outside actually we take L square over 6 outside so you get L square over 6 you're going to have Q1 plus 2 Q2 so <coughs> X bar will be the whole thing L square over 6 Q1 <coughs> 2 Q2 divided by this which is L over 2 Q1 plus Q2 <coughs> and we're just going to get cancelled from here and basically you get L third or L third Q1 plus 2 Q2 divided by Q1 plus Q2 so that's what gives you the actual location for that force. Now, as I said in the earlier, that we could do this by two different methods. Well, that was just one of them.